With 21 million patients a year, our A&Es are bursting at the seams. Tonight, we reveal the hundreds of millions of pounds hospitals are losing because they're getting busier. It might seem bizarre, but the more a hospital admits people through A&E, the more it is penalised financially. The government wants to lower A&E admissions, ideally to level seen in 2008. So once a hospital passes its 2008 total, for every additional patient it admits, it only gets 30% of the cost of treating them. Our freedom of information requests expose the huge toll that's taken. In 2010, the hospital trusts that responded to us had lost out on £109 million. By 2013, that had risen to £170 million, And the overall total of lost revenue since 2010 stands at £641 million. I don't think it was the right way to go about it in a way. We can't then invest in new ways of looking after care and it's harder to invest in getting additional staff and additional kit to help care for those patients. The cash withheld from hospitals is redirected to community schemes to prevent patients ending up in A&E. But our investigations indicate that last year only a third of those schemes hit their targets for reducing A&E admissions. Instead of taking the money off and putting it into these other schemes which don't work, we should be investing it in the frontline services where the patients come, which is your local A&E department. The government has handed over an extra £700 million to try to avert an A&E crisis this winter, but NHS England admits luck will also play its part. The reality is the weather changes and that can have a massive impact. If we have a flu epidemic, that could have a massive impact. If we have outbreaks of norovirus, that could change things. Only last week, the highest number of patients were admitted through A&E since records began. This early in the winter, it does not bode well.